Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Oakley and back in February to celebrate Black History Month, I made a little video called Eight Black LGBTQ Plus Trailblazers Who Inspire Me. And I talked about the power of representation, acknowledging intersectionality, and the response was so great. In the comments of that video, I saw so many of y'all telling me, oh, I love this so much and I would want another version of this for this specific community within the LGBTQ Plus realm. Asian Americans have been misrepresented in media, been largely left out of school curriculums and have been especially excluded while talking about LGBTQ plus history. So today to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, I am going to tell you about eight Asian LGBTQ plus trailblazers who I believe deserve recognition for their incredible work. After years of serving in the military, Dan Choi decided it is time to be honest. When he revealed that he was gay, he was discharged and he immediately took action. He wrote an open letter to President Obama. He was arrested three times for doing protests at the White House. And he became the face of the fight to repeal the don't ask, don't tell legislation. After so much hard work and never giving up, less than two years later, he was invited by President Obama to the White House to witness the president sign legislation to appeal, don't ask, don't tell. A single person can change the course of history, and Lieutenant Dan Choi did that. Evan Lowe was the very first openly gay Asian American to be elected to city council of Campbell, California. And at the age of just 26, he became the youngest Asian American mayor in all of the country. In a country that has historically been run by old, crusty white men, Evan is the perfect example of somebody who's like, um, no, I belong here too. I just love that there's somebody my age ish that is an absolute boss and is running stuff and I am obsessed with him. When Cecilia Chung began to transition at the age of 28, she was fired from her job and she was cut out of her family's lives. This directly resulted in homelessness, a dependence on sex work which for her was often dangerous and violent, and even drug abuse. Despite all of this, she persevered through the unique economic strains and the lack of protections that transgender people face, and she went on to join the San Francisco Francisco Health Commission where she was directly responsible for making San Francisco the first city in the entire country to cover gender confirmation surgery. Almost all people in the LGBTQ plus community face aggression and adversity just because they're trying to be themselves. But Cecilia inspires me because not only did she persevere through all of these challenges, but then she turned around and decided, okay, well, it's going to be my life's work to make sure that what I went through nobody else has to. Ifti Nassim was an openly gay Muslim Pakistani poet who came to America to escape persecution because of his sexual orientation. Ifti is probably most well known for writing a book of poetry called Narman, which is said to be the very first publication to ever have any gay themes in the language of Urdu. He pushed the conversation of LGBTQ plus tolerance in his community, and his work went on to inspire an entire generation of Pakistani poets who focused on honesty and identity. Like, think of all the gay haikus now because of Ifti. Poems are hard to write. Like haikus, who even knows how to do that? 575, five, let's go. Okay. Poems are hard to write, but you made gay ones with ease. Ifti, you're the best. Margaret Cho is an openly queer comedian who uses comedy to show how false constructions of race, gender, and sexuality operate to demean identity. She embraces the intersections of her female, queer, and Asian identities and uses them to challenge stereotypes and demand equality. While her frank and blunt humor might be controversial, she speaks her mind and she does not hold back and that is what I appreciate. Angina was on the very first season of RuPaul's Drag Race and I always loved her. I thought she was so great. While she was on the show, she came out as HIV positive, and that was one of the first times I witnessed somebody that I really looked up to speak openly about it. Angina has spent her entire career being open and authentic and visible, and she works to give a platform to LGBTQ plus people living with HIV so that they can share their experiences. RuPaul always talks about how you need charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent, and Angina has all of those, but I think she especially exemplifies somebody with nerve, somebody who's stands up, who's unafraid, somebody who's brave in everything that they do. I just, I love Angina. Kiyoshi Kuromiya was born in a Wyoming internment camp and he committed his entire life to racial and sexual orientation equality. He was extremely active in the civil rights movement and he was even Martin Luther King Jr.'s assistant, which I never learned about. One of the most powerful stories I read about Kiyoshi was how he protested napalm use in Vietnam in 1968. This was brilliant. So he made this huge announcement 
about how he was gonna burn a dog alive at the University of Pennsylvania's library. Thousands of people turned out to protest only to find a note from Kiyoshi. It said, congratulations on your anti-napalm protest. You saved the life of a dog. Now, how about saving the lives of tens of thousands of people in Vietnam? Back in 1968, that was like a mic drop. It's easy to care about only things that directly affect you and your personal life, but I think Kiyoshi is the perfect example of somebody who stands up for all disenfranchised voices, not just his own community. George Takei is a Hollywood legend, and most people probably know him for his role in Star Trek, but I love him because he has such an intentional use of his celebrity. It would have been easy for him to just ride out, being a celebrity, getting likes and retweets just by being relatable but he stands for something, and he is an active representative of the LGBTQ plus community. Since he came out in 2005, he has not stayed silent for about a half a minute. He has spoken out about marriage equality, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, gay conversion therapy, equality in the Boy Scouts, LGBTQ plus homelessness, and so much more. He talks the talk, he walks the walk, and he inspires me to take a stand when I know I should. Okay, so that is all I have for you guys today. I feel like that's a good list, but there are so many other amazing people within this community that I want you to know about. So if you have somebody that you love that I didn't get a chance to talk about, let me know in the comments below. Tell us all about why you love them, why you look up to them. I want to learn more. And I believe representation is so important in so many different ways, but I want to especially give a little love to the people in my little world on YouTube, on Twitter, the people that I love to follow and who inspire me and teach me within the Asian in the LGBTQ plus world, so I'm gonna link to those people below. But like I said, if you have somebody you love, let me know in the comments. Okay, so that is all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and yeah, I hope you have a great Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and thank you for watching, and good luck with your lives. Okay, bye.